Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to do a review of the Unity Asset Package known as Farm Props by Catleya. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but you can see the name down here. And currently this package is on sale for $7.50 USD, normal price $15 USD. Either way, fairly inexpensive if you're looking to make a commercial product. After I purchased it, but before I did this review, I reached out to the creator and asked them if they had any intention of continuing to add onto these projects because sometimes what will happen is a creator will make the basic version and they add extra assets. And they said that there is no intention to do that. They said they might long term. So I'd say that if you purchase this, go in with the intention that this is all you get and that you will not be getting any anything more in the future. Um, as further evidence, they originally posted this June of 2020. It's currently January of 2021, so it's still the original version with no updates after seven months. Now, I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing. I'm just saying that what you see is what you get. I would not anticipate any additions to it. So, is this worth $7.50? Well, there's basically two things that you would do with this. So first of all, what you see on the screen, as I mentioned, what you see is what you get. This is it. They helpfully put everything in a single scene so you can see everything laid out. And for the most part, it's variations of the same object. Like for instance, if we zoom in here, you can see you have three different versions of a well. So maybe you're upgrading a well system. You can see that you have various versions of different plants. Like we've got some strawberries growing here, got some cabbages growing here, got some pumpkins here, uh, got different fences and three different trees. So when would this be useful for you? I'd say that this would be useful under two conditions. One, you have an environment that you need some farm props for, and for what I consider a fairly inexpensive amount, you could do that. You could add these farm props. So if you're using a low to medium poly look to your, your game, these would fit right in. The other way that you would use this is maybe you have a game that has a farming mini game. This would probably be sufficient for a farming mini game because there are a few different types of plants and then maybe you could purchase some other ones from some other creator and use it in one project. And so as a mini game, this would work out good because maybe you have a single plot of land and that one of the character cooks and what they cook gives your characters a boost in battle or something like that. And so you would have enough here or at least almost enough to do that. Okay, so we've covered the price. Visually, you've seen what's included. We have a belief that it probably won't be upgraded anytime soon as it has not been since it's been released and seven months have passed. The last thing is really just to do a quick little demo to show you how you would use this. So let's use the well. So what we're gonna do, we are going to actually create a new scene. And what we're going to do, we are going to go into the prefab section we're going to take, let's go to game object. We'll do 3D object and we'll do a plane. And what we're going to do, we will put that grass on it. So the grass is stored. Sorry for the delay, just have to find it. There it is, so cell grass. So you can take this, drag it onto the object and it will now create a materials folder with that material on it. So it has a very basic grass look to it, okay? So now what you can do is maybe you want to uh, create a well and then you want to upgrade the well. So what we'll do is we will go to the well and we'll create a C Sharp script and we'll call this upgrades. We'll click on our three wells. And by doing this, you can add the same component to all the objects selected. So the three wells are selected. You can go add component. You can go physics. And you can use a box collider. And we'll make it a trigger. Now what that allows you to do is it allows for uh, detection of clicking on it. So because generally speaking, you'd probably click on an object if you're going to upgrade it. So as a box collider, uh, I think that should be sufficient. Uh, actually, we want to put the script on it. So we'll drag the upgrade script and we'll open that up. 
and we get rid of the remark statements. And we're going to breeze through the coding really fast because this is not meant to be an introductory video. And this is simply going to check to see if you're clicking on the object. So on, mouse, down, and we'll call this, let's create a variable for the next well. So public transform next upgrade. And this way you could use this script for whatever's being upgraded, not just wells. That way you, you, you don't get confused with the verbiage. You say next upgrade, and so you know it's the next in the series. And then you would just instantiate. So instantiate the next upgrade. Where are you going to instantiate it? You're going to instantiate where the current one is. So transform dot position. So that's the position of the object the script is attached to. And you're probably going to use the rotation of the current object. That way, they're always rotated the same way. It doesn't change the rotation. So it would be transform dot rotation. And as I've said before, instantiate has three arguments. What is being instantiated? where it's being instantiated, and the rotation of the object that is being instantiated. In this case, this is what's going to be instantiated. So now what we do, for each of these wells, it's going to want to have that upgrade. So for the first well, it'd be the second. For the second well, it'd be the third. And for the third one, it wouldn't use one. We could just put itself on it. Oops, let's click on the third one but you'd put in code to prevent that from happening. So what we're gonna do, we are going to take the first well and put it into the scene. So that's at zero, zero, zero. So what we'll do is let's just raise up the ground rather than moving down the well. Okay. Let's see how that looks through the camera. All right, let's reposition our camera. So up. Rotate down, move it kind of forward. There we go. So if I haven't forgotten anything, if I click on this, it should upgrade it to the next well. And if I click on it again, it'll upgrade to the next well. All right. Only problem is I didn't destroy the current well. So what you do is after the instantiation, you would do destroy game object. And it's important to do the destroy after the instantiation. So again, we click and we click. So it does move around a little bit. As you can see, it kind of like shuffled off left and right. Not too bad. If you have this within a large enough grid, because more than likely you're having this within a grid system, then that wouldn't matter because you would make sure you create some extra leeway around uh, the location. You wouldn't want the grid to exactly match the edges. You'd give a little space that way. If you have a little flex like that, it doesn't cause any problems. So let's just run that one more time. And there we go. And you could do things like when you click on the well, maybe you have a little particle system that, you know, a little, uh, just a little flourish that lets you know you've upgraded it in addition to see the change. The other thing that you can do is you can have plants grow over time. So very similar, you're going to click, you're going to create a link between them, but it'll happen based on time, not based on mouse click. So for those, we'll just do one of those, and then I think that will wrap up this particular this particular uh, review. Because again, this isn't meant to teach you how to do a farming sim. It's just showing an application and a review of this particular package. So we'll go back into prefabs. We'll go back. Let's go to cabbage. And it has four versions. So each one basically needs to know about the previous one. Okay, so what we can do is we can create a new script. We'll call this one grow. And it's going to have a similar premise, but again, it's going to be based on time. So we'll use IE numerator instead of based on player input. So we'll click on the four. We'll add the script. We don't have to add a collider for this, but 
If you're going to harvest these, then yes, you're probably going to need a collider. That way you can actually click on what you're harvesting. That way you can click on what you're watering. So we don't need it for this example, but you would want to add a, a collider for that purpose. So in this case, what we're going to do, we'll open that script. And in this case, what we'll do is as soon as it's instantiated, it's going to start a counter. So start coroutine. We haven't created the coroutine, so it's not going to recognize this name until we create it. Uh, let's call this grow process. And come down here and do e i e numerator grow process and it's not going to recognize it here because this is where you would create it there see it no longer hates this because now it recognizes it so now this would just be yield return new don't worry too much about the meaning of that what really matters is this wait four seconds and we'll just do like say four seconds so you don't have to wait a long time and then similarly, we're going to have the variable up here. So public transform, and it will be next plant. And then it's just a matter of instantiating the next plant. So instantiate uh, next plant. So what has been instantiated? where it's been instantiated, well, at this current location. So again, the position of the object the script is attached to. And we're all, in every case, we'll use uh, the rotation of the current object. So that would be next plant dot rotation. And then it's just rinse and repeat. You would then do we actually need to delete it as well, just like last time. So uh, destroy, actually, yeah, destroy game object. Now let's think about this. I was going to have it go through the different stages, but the old plant has been destroyed. A new plant has been instantiated, which means this will then execute on the new plant so this is already actually recursive. This is already repeating itself because the new object has been instantiated and will come down here. So actually, I think that'll just about do it now. At, at a certain point, again, you're going to have the end and you don't want it to keep upgrading. So now we take our four plants and we do that. And on our second plant, we'll put on the third. Third plant, we'll put on the fourth. And the fourth plant, we'll just put the fourth one on it so it doesn't give us an error. We will put the first plant into the scene. And depending, again, as, just as we saw, the positioning was slightly off because not all these probably have the same center. We'll, have to, we'll see if the positioning is exactly right for this or not. So one last quick look so that this script is attached to that plant that we just put in the scene. So after four seconds, it will instantiate the next plant and delete it, the current one. Yeah, that should work. Yep, it changed. Wonderful. Okay, so just like that, in addition to reviewing this asset package, you now have the basics of uh, some farm simulation, like how to upgrade objects. In this case, we saw the well, uh, as well as how to make crops grow. And that is basically the essence of crops grow. And the only thing that you would have to do is you might need to water the crop. You might need to fertilize the crop, depending on what you decide is necessary in your game. So you'd have to put some ifs in here. So you wait the four seconds, but then you'd have an if statement that says, if fertilized equals yes, if watered equals yes, that kind of thing, then instantiate the new plant.
So, okay, I think that's about it for this. So I hope you found this review and brief tutorial useful. So you now know what you get with this package. You've seen the various objects. You've seen an example of how to use them, a little bit of snippet of code that you could use in your own projects. Uh, let me know what you thought about this. Let me know if you would like to see additional asset reviews. Recently, Unity had a New Year's sale, so I picked up some assets. So uh, there are a few more that I think would be worthy of reviewing. Some of them are just environments, but in this case, I could give you an example of how to use those because that's the, the videos when you buy an asset okay even before you buy it right on the asset store you can see a video showing you what you get so this is kind of less about what you get and more about how do i integrate this into my project okay so uh if there's anything else you want to see just let me know and i hope you liked and enjoyed this and please enjoy the rest of your day